going on everyone? CP Mod here back with another video and I am back from holidays which means more videos to come I guess. So with that being said, let's get into what we have here today. Now today we're quickly just touching on the stock Intel coolers. Now for years they've never been really anything that special and honestly they're still not that much special when it comes to a stock cooler. You get a sort of plasticky fan and a chunk of metal that touches your CPU in sort of like a little container thing that falls on the floor. So they're nothing really that special. Now whether you're running one because you're not overclocking or don't have the budget for a nicer end cooler, that doesn't mean you can't have an awesome either colour matched or personalised little cooler that came with your CPU. So with that, today we're going to be painting our cooler and finding out whether there's actually any problems with painting up our cooler. So first thing, well, it is sunny outside, so we're going to jump outside and paint our cooler. Don't stop. Okay, after that, there's a few things that we do need to note when going ahead and painting our cooler. In that little section before, we showed us taking off the actual fan assembly to actually paint the uh, cooler itself because we're not necessarily wanting to paint the blades of the fan, more we want to paint the heat sink itself. So we did remove that before we go ahead and get started. Now there's a few different designs out there, so just check with your cooler and don't actually go and snap anything because, well, that's going to be a problem. Also too, keep in mind that you'll be without a CPU cooler for about a day or so as you do need to let that paint dry and if it's a cooler climate you'll be without the cooler for even longer so you might want to keep in mind that you won't be able to use that computer whilst the cooler is being painted. The tools that we actually used were really really basic we used a flathead screwdriver out of our iFixit toolkit and a bit of duct tape to go over the actual contact surface so we don't actually paint that so everything stays pretty much all good and with that being said let's get into seeing what actually happened when we painted our cooler. So basic idle temperatures stayed the same across painted and non painted. It was only when we got into load did we see about a 5 degree difference and that could have been because the room was hotter or because there was actually a slight little difference. We only did one light coat of paint over the actual cooler so we're not creating that much of a layer between the actual metal and actually being able to dissipate the heat. If we were to go ahead and use either a thicker paint or more layers we might be seeing a little bit worse in temperature but about 5 degrees isn't actually half that bad. And with that being said that kind of wraps up this video. It's been pretty quick and is a really cool way to customize your cooler. Whether you're trying to match it up to the color of your motherboard or do you just want something completely different, this is a great way to make your cooler look pretty custom. And I do have to say, once they're painted black or even a different color, they're gonna look pretty sweet as opposed to what they did, sort of the standard uh, aluminium color out of the box. But with that being said, we can't exactly leave it there. And drop us a like if you wanna see us go and actually anodize one of these coolers rather than just paint it. It'll be actually a pretty interesting process and a pretty interesting video. So let us know whether you want to see us anodize a little stock cooler or not. So otherwise guys again like the video if you liked it also do get subscribed if you want to see well that video and of course more build guides and more build videos coming down the line and I'll see you all next time for another video.